Welcome to the interesting podcast number 208. This episode is with the super talented artist behind Pugnacious Pins, Peter Go. If the name wasn't a dead giveaway, you better prepare yourself for a lot of pug talk. Peter and I met at an anime convention in Pasadena last year and immediately hit it off because we're both pug parents and are absolutely obsessed. So naturally, it was only a matter of time before I had to have him on. In this episode, we talk about how he got into art, balancing art and commerce, what goes into making his enamel pins, working with Pug Nation Rescue of Los Angeles and Pug Rescue of Korea, how he recently started fostering, coming into your own as an artist, and so much more. Peter is delightful, and I am so excited for you all to get to know him. Uh, on that note, if you're listening to this on the day that it originally drops on October 27th, 2023, and you live in the Los Angeles area, check out Pug Nation LA's Pugtacular Spooktacular event this weekend at Torrance Park in Torrance, California. Peter will be there with his pugs, and they'll be raising money for the rescue. It's going to be a great time! Have some extra fun for me, because I live a little ways away from that. But in the meantime, let's just jump into this one. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the interesting podcast number 208 with Peter Go. Theme song time! <laughs> pal hey how's it going good good how you doing <gasps> was that is that archie behind you <laughs> yeah he oh was, my uh, god as if on cue he, he was enjoying uh some treats and a sniff mat outside so i i think he just oh he's he's going back nope, for there seconds. you go <laughs> how old is he now he's almost 13 wow almost 13. yeah Damn. yeah so he, he's an old man but he's doing well Good, good. How old was he when you got him? Uh, a puppy. So I, I got him as a puppy. So I've had him like the the whole dang time. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> How's your day going? Pretty good, pretty good. Well, he, he woke me up uh, in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and, and it took me a while to get back to bed. So uh, a little bit out of it since I've, I've gotten Leslie, but overall good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's a it's those old man habits, right? Yeah. You're not an old man yep. if you're not waking up in the middle of the night having to pee. Yep, exactly, exactly. I get it. There's no shade from me, Archie. I'll defend you. <laughs> You're in California, yeah? Uh, yep. Uh, he, uh, here in uh, LA, actually. I'm in, in this uh San Gabriel Valley. So. Oh, right on. Because yeah. we met in Pasadena. Yeah, yeah. At uh, at a uh, anime uh, anime Pasadena, I believe. Yeah, that or sounds it. about right. It was a convention at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like in town at the time, and I was like, "Oh, there's a con here where I have friends." And then I saw your booth and felt uh, compelled via my soul. I was like, I need to go this way. What is that? What is calling me? Oh, there's a booth of pug stuff. That makes sense. <laughs> are you are you from LA? Yeah. So I was uh, born down here, and uh, I actually lived most of my life up in Northern California because uh, oh, cool. my uh, parents ended up moving up there. So I I did almost all of my grade schooling um, up in Stockton. Which is gotcha. kind of like a uh, a little bit east of the Bay Area, but then uh went to college down here in LA and have uh, kind of been here since. So I, I I've been back down here in LA been over a decade now, but but I love it. Like I, I definitely consider LA home. Like all of my family it is still back in Northern California, but um yeah, I, I I think LA is amazing. So I I love it here. Where's home? When you think in your head like. I need to go home. Oh, oh, de oh, definitely, definitely here. So I, yeah, in in the in the San Gabriel Valley. I I used to live on the west side and, and all of that, and and it's and it's been a while. But since the pandemic and just kind of like being stuck at uh in in kind of one location for a while, I I definitely think of of uh, of here in LA as as home now. So okay. yeah, yeah, and and I and just kind of you know having Archie and then moving around with him and. And for him, I think at this point, this is like the longest he's been in one set location too. So it's nice. You said you came down to LA for school. What did you go to school for? 
Yep, yep. I uh, so I went to uh, UCLA, and originally I went in as an English major, but I discovered that that was basically all uh, poetry when English wasn't yet English, and uh... that was not my thing. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I, did, I did not enjoy it. So I did sociology, but uh, college was actually where I uh, discovered theater and, and creative writing. And so I got to do a bunch of that uh, while I was at UCLA and really, really loved it. And and I think that's kind of where I started considering, like, maybe I can explore things that aren't just like standard career paths. Sure. Um and 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 yeah and 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 so after school i i kind of did the kind of a typical like you know like search for a an office job kind of a thing sure so i actually i graduated in 2008 and i don't know if you remember what 2008 was like but that was like right when the recession hit oh yeah and it was terrible <laughs> for everyone yeah it was yeah, it was so, so bad. And so right out of school, actually, I ended up like uh, having to just pick up a couple of like part time jobs, even though I had my mm -hmm. college degree and all of that. And and it was really, really rough. But um, kind of fortunately, after that, I I went into a few other things. Um, but yeah, at, at a certain point. Um, oh, so sorry, I, I, I don't I don't know if I uh, had the chance to say, but um I am an artist and and and, uh, yeah. and that's something that I've been doing for a uh, uh, very, very long time, not as not necessarily as a career, but just like, you know, throughout my entire life. Mm -hmm. But um, I think essentially just, you know, kind of a number of things led me down a path where I've been really fortunate to to work um, in, in different fields. I've I've gotten to do uh, nonprofit work. I've, you know, worked in kind of the uglier side of like corporate the corporate world sure and um yeah at this point now i've been essentially making enamel pins that's kind of the main place that my art focuses into for i want to say i believe it's since 2017 which is crazy to me because that's, wow. that makes it six years now and um yeah it's it's been a wild ride and i don't know you know if if on your end as an actor, one of the things you kind of experience, like, well, I would say, you know, like, um, kind of following along your journey, Brian, I think like one of the things I really, really love seeing about you is that you're so passionate about what you do. Oh, and yeah. acting. <laughs> I think it's really, really great, you know, because it's like, it's, you see how much you actually love what you do. Oh, yeah. But I guess for you, I don't know if that, has been something that was always there or if that's something you've built up because I guess for me you know like um getting into kind of creating my own art and then deciding to do it as a business was not something oh that sure I I kind of was confident about mm -hmm. it, it was definitely something I knew I wanted to do um but I had a lot of hesitation behind it and I think a lot of people do like I'm, I'm fortunate now to say that I have like a, a bunch of friends kind of you know in in the save arena of of what I do but but yeah yeah I don't, I don't know if that was like your experience as well oh yeah well that's the whole thing is like the imposter syndrome shows up in spades when commerce gets involved in art yeah that's something yeah, yeah. actually I'm working on now now that because I've been acting professionally since 2014 but I'm just now starting to be like, oh, right, maybe I should get paid. <laughs> <laughs> and then when a dollar amount comes in, you're like, oh, man, is that is that too much? Am I am I worth this amount? And it becomes this whole like, oh, yeah, yeah, 100 percent. I, I know what you mean. Absolutely. Like one of the things I used to do, and I feel like one of the things that a lot of artists can do kind of like no matter what your field is like, you kind of undercut yourself yeah, for totally. a while early on, you know, because you're like, oh, like am I worthwhile? And it really does take a good amount of time before like you feel like, okay, you know, like what I do is worthwhile. What I do is good. Yeah. And that's hard though. That's hard. Especially I feel like a certain subset of people, like I, I, I actually really love that you brought up like the whole like idea of, you know, like 
commerce intertwining, like capitalism intertwining mm -hmm. with, with art. Because like that's something I've actually really, really been uh, sometimes struggling with. Yeah. Uh, you know, like because you know, in, in regards to like creating art and selling enamel pins and stuff like that, like and and just kind of I, I feel like physical art in general, whether it's like painting or or like, you know, people uh like doing prints and stuff like that. I, I, th I think it is a bit different in that like, okay, you know, the way that we make money is by essentially like selling physical copies of the right. things we, but like one of the things I never considered until I started making pins myself was like the idea of like artificial scarcity and how like there will oh. be a lot of people who will specifically create like just a certain number of things or a limited edition, which I think is completely valid. Sure. But one of the things I've always kind of recognized and known is that, like, I'm the most happy, even if someone doesn't pick up my art, but, like, I'm at, like, a show, an event, and someone sees my stuff, and they laugh or they smile. Sure. You know, I, I think for me, that's just such a nice thing, because, like, it means that they're connecting with what I make. Yeah. And, and so it's like, you know, I totally get that sometimes you might want like oh hey there's only going to be one of this there's only going to be 10 of this mm -hmm. but like that's kind of never been my mo and i actually recently got to go to i believe it was the broad here in la for um the keith herring exhibit oh, and cool. i'm not sure if you're familiar with keith herring but like mm -hmm. he was an artist that was a uh, pretty prominent in the 70s and 80s and and one of his huge things was like well the, the whole exhibit was titled art is for everybody he, he's Ooh. the guy that, that does the um, kind of like they look like the like kind of like, you know, like the police chalk outline. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so like I, I didn't know a whole lot about him, but just going through the exhibit, it was it kind of recapped his life because, you know, unfortunately, he ended up um, dying uh, at, at a young age. But he, he created so much art. And one of his things was just how like there were people at the time who were complaining that like, oh, you know, like he's doing so, so many things, it's going to undercut and devalue his work, mm -hmm. as well as like the idea of him, you know, creating things that are like cheap. He really, really wanted his artwork to be able to get out there, as well as just the general idea of like, art being for the masses. And and I really love that, because that's not something that I feel like you often come across, you know, in, yeah. the, in the fine art or, or, you know, physical art world with, with, you know, things like acting, of course, is different, because you do want what you create to like reach out to as many people as possible, sure. you know um but yeah it's I, I i think it's 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 such a a crazy but interesting thing and i'm so so grateful just for like the people i've been able to meet and and the friends i've been able to kind of get to know better through doing this and and like you're saying a bit earlier with like the idea of imposter syndrome i feel like you know, there's always a little bit of that there, but I'm also so glad to feel like, okay, you know, I do have a space in this world. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's still something that I I sometimes struggle with, but I also think that's a good thing because it keeps yeah. you humble. I think sometimes so too. Even when you might not want to be, you know, it, you don't want to, you don't want to do the opposite when you're like, oh, I'm the best at this. And then it's actually terrible. You're like, oh no. Yeah. It's much, I, I find mo most of the best people that I know have a little bit of imposter syndrome, which is what keeps you open to learning and like, all oh, right, they can be better. And like, let's collaborate as opposed to I'm the best at this. Give me a lot of money. You're like, mm, okay. It makes me like you a little less going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you say that because what, just one of my big things also, just even outside of art, is that, like, I absolutely think that we can always keep on learning and growing. Yes. You know, not 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 necessarily in, in like, that that standard video game way of, of, of totally. leveling up. Like, I, 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 when you meet a friend that you haven't seen in a long time and you kind of seen that, you know, like, they've grown even in small ways, I think that's just such, a, like, a nice, fantastic thing. Yeah, you know, like, and 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 you know, and 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 it and it is kind of you know, uh, oppositely true. Where if you've known someone for a very very long time, but maybe you know they're kind of still in that that same place that they've been for you know a few decades, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, you know, like, hey, I understand where 
you know, differences may be. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I think having the mindset that like, there's still going to be stuff for me to learn for me personally has been such a, a nice thing. And that doesn't mean like, oh, I have to learn and I have to grow because, right. you know, some, sometimes you regress. Sometimes it really is step four two steps back you know but like I, I think being able to have that mentality is really really nice and and especially also recognizing that like you might be wrong sometimes yeah sometimes, you know? <laughs> most times in my experience yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and and so you know it's yeah you know like when when you think about that I guess kind of like in your professional life it's it's scary because sometimes you don't know where necessarily things are gonna go but I'm I'm glad that overall things have worked out. Yeah. You mentioned passion. I think passion is one of the most important things in life because life is really hard out the box. So if you can find something that you're passionate about, there's so many people who don't have that. Yeah. So to have the courage to kind of follow that inner thing, you know, because I, I think I don't I think artists are born that way. I think we're wired in a certain way to where we just have to be creative, whether we like it or not, in one way or another. And so there is something to be said about listening to that inner voice and then following it. And like enamel pins is such a specific medium. Yeah. Like how did you how did you how did you end up in enamel pins? Because there's a million ways to do art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a very, very good question. And I actually I so I've always been the kind of person that has had trouble just kind of sticking with one thing uh -huh. like um I've, I've always kind of just doodled and, and, and drawn growing up even as a kid okay. and, and that's something I think that is easier to stick with just because you're having a pencil and paper when you're at school that's always there sure but like in the past like I I've, I've done uh painting I've oh. done uh, woodworking like wood burning even whittling and things like that dude and and just I mean, but the thing is, I've, I've never done any of those things professionally. It was just like, I love the idea of trying something new and kind of, you know, discovering if you might love something. And, and you know, of, of course, as as you do different things, like I'm sure you with martial arts, you discover like, oh, like to actually get really, really good, you do have to spend a good chunk of time doing something. Oh, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, with a lot of these things, I would just kind of dabble around and have fun, but then also discover like, okay, hey, you know, it is one of those things that is much harder than you might typically imagine, but uh, it's funny because at a certain point I got into making stamps and um, I had uh, two dogs with me at the time, uh, Archie, of course, and uh, my other boy, Otto. And I just really liked the idea of just kind of uh, making things that were like them. And I was also just kind of making um, a couple of art pieces that were for friends as well of their pets. And cool. and from there, I don't know what it was specifically about enamel pins, but um. I just really like the idea of like Archie and Otto as a pin. Yeah. And so like I'd seen them as like, you know, like if you go to like Disneyland or whatever, you know, you you like they always make like little collectibles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um it, it was right around that time, like I think in 2017, where um just kind of access to be able to like create things on your own kind of um, became more widely available. Like the 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 kind of like in the enamel pin scene actually really started not growing until about like the mid uh 2010s like maybe around 2014 2015 mm -hmm. um like of course you know with disney collectors and things like that that's been around for decades that's been around for decades but like sure really people kind of making their own stuff started to get bigger and bigger and so i decided to uh kickstart uh, my idea of having kind of like a a cheerful pug and concerned pug that's what I called it love it and and I was so like just really really scared to start off and do it because in general I hadn't really ever sold any of my own art previously like it would just be things that I created for myself but um I remember still to this day my very very first backer was this person all the way in Japan that I did not even know. Wow. And that moved me so much because I was just like, oh my gosh, like this person doesn't know me. They are halfway across the world, but they liked what I was making enough. And at the time it was just kind of like, like sample drawings because um, when, when you, you know, create enamel pins and things like that, there are like, 
there are like certain amounts that you have to make. And, and so, you know, it, it, it can be kind of an investment to get things started. But, you know, I, I was so just like moved that at the idea that even a single person was interested because I was like, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if it's the same for you, but it's like, sometimes, you know, when, when friends say nice things about your yeah. craft, you're like, of course yeah. it's nice. Like, of yeah. course it's nice, but like, you're like, okay, how much of it is you saying that thing because you know me and yes. you're being nice versus like someone who doesn't have a personal attachment to you actually really enjoying your craft? A hundred percent. That's how my imposter syndrome used to pop up was exactly that. Because I'd be like, are the people around me conflating my ability with my personality? You know, it's like mm -hmm. they really like me. So anything that I do, they can't be objective about it because they like me. And I'm like, wait a second. Like my mom's like, that was great. I'm like, cool. Some random person's like, that was great. I'm like, oh, was it great? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, Why? Totally, you know? Why do we do that? <laughs> right, right. And, and you know, and, and that's something that I did for a really, really long time. But then like it's it's something that I've also kind of been so glad to be able to like grown from where so so fortunately, you know, kind kind of going back to the that the whole, you know, first set of pins, it, it ended up barely being successful. But then I was able to create them. And from there I, I kind of had the idea to just make more. And it's been a number of years now and I think for me, I struggled for a little bit to kind of figure out what I might be able to derive or if I derived pride from what I did. Sure. And, and and just kind of like, I think for me, a, a, a lot of the struggle with that just kind of has to do with being Asian American. You know, it's one of those things where you shouldn't be prideful and boastful. And, and so even when you do well, don't pat yourself on the back. And so sure. that's something I struggled with for a really, really long time. But one of the things that I've been so, so glad to do and proud to do is um, kind of give back. Like when I was in grade school, I did a bunch of community service. Like uh, my friends and I were part of a key club in high school. And I'm not sure if like your high school like had mm -hmm. one, but it's just, you know, like like that community service group. And we were yep. really, really into it. And I remember back, back then, I was like, oh, I hope that when I'm an adult, I still do community service or give back. And and so, of course, you know, life kind of takes you by. And like mm -hmm. uh, throughout so much of my life, I didn't necessarily have the chance to to do things. And and of course, you know, it's, it's like for so many people, we're trying to just kind of make it by as artists. And so you don't necessarily have the financial mm -hmm. ability to like, just like say like, hey, I, I would love to, you know, like support all of these things. But um through doing the pins, like one of the the big things that I do that I personally love so much is a lot of hug designs. Yeah, I because, love it. Uh, because Archie, uh, my my boy, is a pug, and you know it's it's just something I've 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 grown to to love in general, and and so I actually adopted my um my other boy Otto from Pug Nation Rescue of L.A. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, which is uh, here in Los Angeles. And they're an amazing rescue group. Uh, they basically take in any and all pugs. A lot of the ones they have are, are seniors who are sadly, you know, uh, abandoned. And, and it was one of those things, like when I first got Archie, I really didn't even think that there were like pug rescues. I, I didn't even necessarily have a pug in mind. Sure. Um, but he just kind of fell into my lap at the at, at the time. And, and I ended up... Um, getting him as a puppy but um yeah I since then I have been able to just like do a number of things where I'm able to like raise money for uh Pug Nation of LA and even like create pins where I I specifically end up you know like donating just like 100% of the proceeds to them and and that for me is something that I can say I'm really really proud of because it's like I, I think it does tie into a lot of what we've been talking about in regards to like imposter syndrome and just like Mm -hmm. I guess also for me, you know, like sometimes kind of like not feeling too proud of like when it's me just being celebrated for my own art. Like, yes, that is nice to a certain extent, but then um, I can feel weird about it. Sure. You know? But like when I'm able to do something good, especially for like dogs, like yeah. for me, that it's, it's just such a nice, nice thing. And I recently this year just started fostering for 
another pug rescue, pug rescue of Korea, which has yeah. been like a whirlwind experience. And and I talked to you about that a little bit. I bet, that, dude. You know, so like one of the things we haven't mentioned it is that you have your boy Kubo. Ugh. And so how I, I want I got I gotta ask how's Kubo been doing? He's good. He's good. He's I mean he's just the perfect little man. How how he's he's pretty young still, yes. Yeah, he's he's three and a half. He turned he turned okay. three. Oh, and that's a great age. And that's dude, great. we got him at five weeks old. Oh wow, so young. How long did he have like that crazy puppy energy for? He still got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Earlier today, okay. he was zoomies on a walk just at the end. He's crazy. Yeah, Ar- Archie was crazy for a while, but then I think fortunately, like after around like the two year mark, he kind of like settled into himself. But it's it's funny because like as they just kind of you know progress through life, like you see so much of their personality, and like oh, yeah. as Archie's turned into like I like to call him like my old man Archie now, like uh-huh. he, like. He's always been a little bit sassy, but he's so sassy yeah. now. <laughs> and like he knows exactly what he wants. And and he has gone like mostly deaf. And he's and his eyesight's going a little bit more. But then like basically he's like trained me to like do what he wants now because yeah. he bark at me. And he's so much better about it. Because like when he was younger, like I mean, you know, I I, I think kind of like one of the tragedies of life is that we can't speak to our dogs directly know. And, and know exactly, you know, kind of what they're thinking and feeling and wanting. And But with him now in his old man age, if he wants any small thing, he will let me know. And it's, <laughs> it, it's stressful, but then it's also it's also good and nice. And so that's so Kubo, funny. Kubo still goes crazy. Like, oh, yeah. And he's but know. he's also very opinionated. He has the biggest personality of any dog I've ever had. And it, mm. it says something about me that I've never called him a dog. It's like, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of the things that I love because, I mean, also with me, with Archie, like, I consider him, like, my son, too. Yeah, you know? and, 100%. And, 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 and for people out there who, like, don't have pets, you know, I, I get that how, how that could sound a little bit crazy. But, like, <laughs> for, if you have a cat or a dog or any other pet that, like, you really, truly love, like, you understand. It, oh, it, yeah. It, Dude, I tell him all the time, it scares me how much I love Kubo. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like even when Archie was really, really young, I don't know if you, do, I don't know if you do the the crazy pet parrot thing, but like you start like thinking about like way in the distance of like when they're no longer gonna be there, and you make yourself sad. You know, <laughs> that's like that's something I I used to do all the time, and and you know Archie is much older now, and and fortunately he's still doing okay, but like that that's you know I I think it's it's so I, I ended up um unfortunately having to put down my boy uh auto like right before the pandemic started. And so that mm-hmm. that's been a few years now. And Archie actually is the very first dog I've like ever had as a oh wow as, as like as like you know my own as a pet. And so yeah, when I first got him, I was actually really, really scared because I was just like, is this a mistake? You know, like sure. This Am is I ready crazy. to be a parent? This is so different. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and 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 having a puppy is a lot of work. Oh it's my a gosh. lot of work, you know. Yeah. And and so, it 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 honestly took me a little while to really like grow to love him. But sure. like, when that hit, like it it's so deep, you know. Oh yeah. And 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 so I don't know. It's it's crazy. But like I I I knew like when we met, that was like one of the things where I'm like, okay, he's my people because. Yeah. Like, I remember you talking about Kubo and I was like, I was like, Brian gets it. He gets it. Yeah. Like, you know, because it's it's like some people, like even some of my friends will have dogs and, and it's, and it's totally fine. You know, everyone will have a different relationship to, to their pets and totally. stuff like that. You know, like for some people, like having a pet is just like, you know, like for me, like sometimes Archie is my entire life, but that's okay. Yeah. 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 Like I, because he's older now, I don't travel as much. I don't, <laughs> want to do things where like i have to put him in a situation in which he might be unfamiliar with something sure you know and 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 so that that also actually has sometimes come into conflict in regards to my work because one of you know the ways i'm able to kind of get out there is um by doing events and you know doing shows and and that can be harder because since coming to the san Gabriel valley now I, i've just kind of lived on my own and so um sometimes events and shows end up being like full day things like it'll be you know where i have to leave my home at 7 8 a.m and i might not get back until 10 p.m and so that can be you know really difficult because then 
I have mm-hmm. to figure out what to do. And yeah, you know, for me, one of the things I've recognized because I, I've definitely like talked to friends about it and, and just kind of other artists where sometimes I'll, I'll feel really, really grateful to be invited out to things. But then sometimes I might have to say like, oh, sorry, I can't because I don't have someone right now that can like babysit them. And, sure. and so, you know, like, like as, as, as a parent, as a biological parent to our yeah. dogs, you know, like mm-hmm. we, we recognize like, Hey, you know, it's like their, their, their happiness and their well being you know, does come first in so much of the case. And so, Oh yeah. yeah I, I mean, obviously having like a human being child is different because you legally can't leave them at home. Know, yeah. <laughs> there are different that, laws, but that's the only difference. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. You know, I'm, I'm sure there are parents out there that would be leaving their toddler at home if they could. Right. Legally, yeah. but, you know, I, I, I guess at least, you know, that that's the benefit we have. But then there there are so many things that are it's for me been the greatest joy of my life. Oh, just yeah. kind of having Archie there. And, you know, with Kuba, like, I mean, you know, like you still have such a a long ways to go, but you know, I, I, I love, I love seeing that and hearing that for you. you know? Oh yeah, dude. I, I got, see, I got lucky. I got one of those pugs that live forever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, how, how did you end up with a pug then? Had you, did you grow up with pugs or like, where did this No, come no. From? So I used to think they were really, really ugly, Yeah, but like <laughs> at a point they get you. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Get they're so you ugly. Know? They're cute. Same. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You know, late. but that, yeah, I was just say like at this point to me, like I don't even see the ugliness. Like it's oh, funny because like even like a lot of older dogs. I mean, I feel like so many people will look at like older animals in general and just think like, oh, they're not as cute. They're uglier for me. I see a senior and I'm like, they're the most precious baby. Right. Like they are the best. Yeah. Like I yeah. love a senior uh pug and just I don't know. It's I, I honestly don't know what it I mean, so I know my like obsession came after I got Archie. Sure. But I think just kind of Archie coming about fell into it. Like I guess I guess one I mean, one of the things for me criteria wise was that like I knew that like, you know, of course, like bigger dogs are fantastic. Like mm-hmm. I love labs. I, I love other kinds of dogs, but the bigger the dog a lot of times, the more energy they have. Totally. And and the more, you know, the more stimulation they might need and so mm-hmm. one of the things with pugs that can sometimes be a lie is that you know they can be lap dogs and so with Archie he was crazy for so long and so he did yeah. require a lot of stimulation <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that surprised people too is that like you know it's like they they might end up kind of you know coming across a dog or you know may or and and just kind of have that Kubo experience uh-huh energy all the time yep I I find that there's two varieties of pugs there's the ones that are just loafs they just hang out and are cool just to sleep all day. And then there's ones that are crazy. Kubo's yeah. crazy, yeah, 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 which yeah. I, I kind of love. I got to be honest. It's like <laughs> even when he's in like some insane movie, like, what are you doing, dude? It's like he's even got a crazy look in his eye. You're like, oh, why? I'm just obsessed with you. Every time I walk into a room and I just look at him, I just melt. I can't help it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's the best because, you know, you're you're seeing their joy. Like, I think I think that's the thing. Like, if if you have a dog or cat or, or any other pet, like. Prior to, so prior to me having Archie, I didn't understand what like that kind of love could be. Yeah. Not even just for me to have for for something else, but like to receive. Yes, you know where it's like it. it I mean, it, it, it sounds cheesy as hell, but like you you truly don't know, and like they love you so much, really without strings attached. Yeah. You know, unconditional. And, and that's something that you don't get from people. And, 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 and in a lot of cases, rightfully so, because, you mm-hmm. know, if people treat you like crap, maybe you shouldn't love right. them with all your heart, <laughs> right. you know, like, like boundaries are good, but dogs will, yeah. you know, and, and, and that is, that is both the wonderful and, 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 and sad thing about them. But um, yeah, you know, I'm the pandemic sucked for a lot of people and it really sucked for me early on too, just because like mm-hmm. I live by myself. So it was just me, and and especially because I had just lost Otto. So it was just me and Archie, and yeah. I love Archie to death. But Otto was the one that was more like emotionally in tune and more empathetic with sure. Archie. Like <laughs> if you're upset, sometimes he's like, "Whatever, right. <laughs> so it was you'll get over it." <laughs> yeah, but like I mean, he he's he's definitely a sweet boy, and like 
and 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 he's there for me. But he he's he's not like when sometimes you hear about like you know like people's pets being just really emotionally in tune with with how they are. He, that that's not him, which is okay. <laughs> but um, that's Kubo and his mama. Like one of the things that I I really wanted to start doing, like I mentioned a bit earlier, was fostering. And so yeah, I, I had actually thought about adopting after losing Otto for a while, just because for me, you know, the fear of like, are he is older now? Yeah. I am at this point where I'm like, I know I don't necessarily want to be without a dog. Sure. Like, I feel like, like loss of a pet is something that's so insanely tragic because mm-hmm. like, that's not something where like, if you're not a pet owner, you generally experience like yeah. parents generally don't lose their children. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Like, like that, that's just kind of a given, of course, you know, it's like sometimes it happens and, and that's just sure. like a, a tragedy that, that no one can ever explain. But like when we bring, you know, like mm. a dog into our lives, a cat into our lives, we go in knowing that, you know, like, yeah. Hey, they're not going to be there forever. But like, for me, it was a really big struggle. Like, I'll definitely say, like, when when I lost my boy Otto, that was like the biggest heartbreak I had ever had, like the most sorrow I had ever experienced. But like, I'm always gonna miss. It. That'll always be there. But like, fortunately, it doesn't always have to be about the sadness and the grief. Like, mm-hmm. the grief can coexist with good memories. Yeah, and it's nice that with time that happens because you know like again archie's 13 fortunately there are some pugs that end up living to be like 18 years old mm-hmm. which is, you know like really really fantastic because like you know the thing with bigger dog breeds sadly is that a lot of them do end up living uh, a shorter lifespan yeah um but then you know i also know that you know it could be one of those things where i might not have as much time with them so essentially i i was just kind of like i want to adopt another dog because you know i have like the idea of like being without one is just like such like a sad thing to me. Yeah. But I I started fostering for this really really amazing rescue called Pug Rescue of Korea early this year, and um, I assumed that they were just based in Korea, but um, which they actually are. So like their like main location is in Korea, but they actually adopt out to the U.S. and their mm-hmm. and their kind of like other location is actually here in los angeles and so oh cool um yeah so the crazy thing is like i guess you know in asia i i'm not 100 percent sure how it goes but like i know just personally from you know being asian myself and is in that like yeah of course it's always going to be a case-by-case basis sure. but just kind of generally culturally um at least in the past it was seen as where like dogs and cats were kind of seen as like outdoor animals a lot of times or just kind of like not necessarily part of the family but as like hey you know like how a lot of people might see like fish you know and 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 so there's not maybe not as much of a connection sure Um, and and so of course nowadays it's different where people across the world will treat their pets like you know like their own children in the same way yeah yeah. (laughs) but um it's 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 unfortunate that you know like across the world it's one of those things where there are just so many you know pets that end up getting abandoned and so the really really fantastic thing is that um Pug Rescue of Korea they're they're like such a small organization in Korea it's actually just one woman named Kim who she she is like the founder but she is the one that basically drives across all of South Korea when she hears that there's a pug and and will like drive like and make like a four hour trip out just to like rescue a pug that's been impounded because like wow. unfortunately like in the US well I mean even in the US you know sometimes like with shelters and things like that like unfortunately because they're so crowded dogs don't often get uh, a, a good chance at life before yeah. you know they they end up um being euthanized but um yeah you know she's like the single person who she has her own job I'm not sure what she does for work but she does work but then like she she takes in pugs from all of these places and fortunately they do have fosters in Korea as well but okay, cool. but what they do is um they will then fly the pugs out here across the sea to to be adopted out here in America because you know there there is uh more of that demand for you know like uh pugs and things like that and so yeah. i've 
gotten the opportunity to foster uh, two pugs for them, uh, Penny and Silver, which was, oh my God. which has been such a crazy but amazing experience. When when I uh, first fostered Penny, which was in uh, the beginning of 2023, this year, um, I went, went in prior thinking, okay, maybe I might adopt her. But sure. like, I've always been, so I have a very, very high amounts of anxiety, but fortunately, like high functioning anxiety. There you go. And You're so, going to have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and and so I make it work for myself. But like, when it comes to big decisions, that's when like, oh, yeah. the, the, you know, the feeling of the world crashing in on, on, on and that kind of happens to me where I'm just like, okay, you know, like getting another dog. Yeah. That's huge that is not a small decision to make that's something that could affect the next 10 to 15 years of your life oh yeah so you know like i i want to make sure that i'm i'm making the right decision and um and so yeah so i went and got penny and on the very first day i was like okay i'm not gonna doctor like hug rescue crew is really great because they said like hey we'll give you two weeks you know to kind of see how you feel you know get to know her because of course you know like being in a situation where she's with like a ton mm-hmm. of other fosters in Korea, maybe having come from not a great situation because sadly, some sure. of them came from the streets and whatnot. Um, yeah, they're like you know, give it a bit of time and, and you know and, and and see how you like it. But for me, I knew I had to immediately <laughs> make the decision because I was like, I'm gonna grow emotionally attached, and if yeah. I do, it's gonna be so hard. So I said, like, okay, okay, I'm not gonna adopt her. I'm okay with this one, just kind of going. But it was so funny. Like fortunately, she ended up being adopted in, in just only about a month and and um the family that ended up adopting her uh actually was from northern california and they drove all the way down here just to adopt her which i thought was so cool. amazing but they actually previously adopted from pug rescue korea and like and i'm so glad penny went with them because every now and then i get updates she's living her best life she rules oh, her cool. house so it's 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 the best but like I was so emotionally devastated. <laughs> like, when I knew that she was going to be adopted like the night before. I was like heartbroken. And I was like, if for some reason they don't drive down, of course. I'm going to adopt her. I'm going to adopt her. I'm going to do it. Right. Where, like, You're getting adopted in, tomorrow, I promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like in the, in the beginning of the whole thing. I was like, no, no. And so it's just, it's, it's funny. And I've learned so much about myself. And, and I think it's one of those things where, you know, like, so many people don't necessarily consider fostering just because it, it can be rough. Like, I think fortunately, oh, yeah. if you already have a dog, it's not too bad because like adding a second dog temporarily, like, yes, you know, of, of course, it's going to be more work. Sure. Like, you know, especially if they're younger and they have lots of energy. Um, But for me, it was such a rewarding experience. Like to know that, like, you're giving these guys like truly a second chance at life like yeah. you're part of that process you know and 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 so i did it again and, and the second time around was like just as heartbreaking oh, no. you know like to, <laughs> to kind of uh ex- experience because i ended up having silver for for even longer than uh mm-hmm. than 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 uh than penny and unfortunately again she ended up getting adopted outside of the la area so she actually ended up getting adopted in Pennsylvania. And wow. so like, like one of the things that I've I've been really, really glad about is that I've been able to make a couple of friends with like other people who progress in Korea. And I've gotten to know some other know some other fosters. And and it's and it's so funny because like one of my good friends, like both of the the dogs that she's fostered have been adopted locally in the LA area. So sometimes she even gets to see them. Uh... <laughs> and I'm so glad for her. But like I see it with jealousy. Okay. I was like, <laughs> Oh, you're you like you're fortunate. Like every now and then, she'll tell me like because one of the dogs that um she was fostering actually got adopted by like people who who live just like a few blocks away from her. So, oh, great! So she'll see, so she'll see uh she'll see her her former foster and walks every now and then. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> that that would be like the best present in the world to be able to just kind of see my foster dogs again, but. But yeah, I'm I'm actually so so excited because I'm gonna be uh taking in a new foster tomorrow. I'm gonna Ooh. be going out to to LAX to pick up uh my new foster boy uh Wellington. I, oh, his name is, what a name! His full name is Wellington Mayfair. I don't know oh. where that comes from. It's something I think, cool. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. So the really nice thing that Progress Computer does is that like people who who are like adopted previously or who donate, like they'll they'll like uh like you know ask them if they'd like to like name one of the dogs that have come in. So Wellington Mayfair ended up you know being a a name that someone gave him, which I think is really really sweet. But in my head, I'm I, I already think of him as Beef Wellington. Oh yeah, because that's just kind of the thing. <laughs> sure. So he'll he'll be my little beefy boy while he's oh, here for it. for a bit, but. I, I'm ex- I'm excited, and Archie doesn't always love it because he's always kind of been like a solo dog. Like, sure. Originally, I got my boy Otto because I I wanted Archie to have a companion. So it's like I was working like the typical nine to five. Sure. Where I was just basically out of the house the whole day, and I felt bad because you know Archie basically had nothing to do. So I thought getting him a companion would be great. But then um, both he and Otto just wanted my attention. They didn't really <laughs> care for each other. Fortunately, they got along well. But yeah. Archie is very, very used to kind of being his own solo dog, but I am fortunate that he allows for uh, for sure. visitors, and, and I'm I'm really, really excited. I like I think you know for me like one of the things like I just super encourage people to do if they have the opportunity because of course you know like not everyone does, but like if you end up being in a place where you get to foster, it's really I think for me it's the most satisfying and worthwhile thing that I've gone to do this year. Yeah. Like talk about giving back. Come yeah, on. Yeah. You know, and you know, I, I, I like, I understand why some people don't because it, it, it can be really hard and it can be really sad. Like, Oh yeah. Like one of the, the people that I, 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 met, I met through Pug Rescue Korea who only started fostering this year. She was saying how like, I have been heartbroken, but I know for her, it was, even more difficult because like she like immediately grew attached oh. and, and, and left her foster and so like after uh kind of you know having her first first foster adopted it was something where she didn't know if she could do it again but then it's like fortunately you know with a little bit of time you go sure. through that period of grief right i can hurt again <laughs> I, yeah, I can do it again because you know it's it's like for some pet parents so you, you said so it, it sounds like you've had dogs for oh yeah Whole for, life. oh nice nice yeah okay. Never so had a pug. Though. It's 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 one of those things where you've you've gone through you oh, know yeah. like loss and <laughs> and I guess I, mean, I guess I don't I don't know how that experience was for you or like you know if it's just <sighs> something that like devastating. I I am a I I've always been uh, emotional since becoming an actor. It got way worse. <laughs> you mm, know, mm. I was like, I need to access mm-hmm. these full time. It's like, oh no, but mm-hmm. it's. You can just tell dog people, and I'm for sure a dog person. Like I like, I do like people a lot, but dogs, all of I love every dog. People, yeah, yeah, I yeah, like yeah. most people. Yeah. Dogs, I love. Every, I will give my life for any of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's something about pugs, right? Pug people, oh. like it's so specific. Like other dogs, like sure, yeah, you know, like there's German Shepherd people, like Golden Retriever. I guess is close. There's definitely a community around Golden Retrievers, but pugs are something else. I've not seen yeah. any other breed that has that level of like a personality type or so, I don't know what it is, but it's like pug yeah, people and I pug think, people. No, absolutely. Right? It's funny because like prior to getting Archie, you know, I didn't really know anything about all of that. Mm-hmm. But then like now, you know, I'm like, oh, wow. There are like actually like so many people who are pug people. And like, it's really, really like amazing and wonderful. And it's just like, it's, it's so nice. Like you were saying earlier, you know, how you have like so much love for dogs and like, I'm like the exact same way where I just like I'm I'm a little bit different though in that like I guess you at where I am now like I I, I talk as if like I'm like uh like uh an, an an old person but like being in my like upper thirties I'm like oh people I'm done with people you yeah. know like <laughs> I, I I do love the people in my life and and when you meet people that you click with it's always oh, yeah. a fantastic feeling mm-hmm. but like you're saying like dogs 100 percent love every dog all of them. You know, Dogs are amazing. They're wonderful. Like I even really, really like cats. It's just unfortunately I'm highly allergic. Oh, sure. So <laughs> that's you know that, that that's the sad thing. Like I will pet a cat and then my eyes will be itchy and all of that. But right. then worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you know, for, fortunately with with dogs I'm okay. But yeah, I think it's it's such like an amazing thing to be able to just kind of like have like that camaraderie with other people. Like I don't know if you've ever gotten the chance to bring Kubo to like any like meetups or anything like that i believe there is one kind of like out in your area of the san Gabriel valley there used oh, to be a cool. huge la pug meetup before the pandemic but uh 
the people who ran it, it, it was a husband and wife with their, where the fact they ended up having a human baby. And so. Oh, uh, lame. That kind of, yeah. That, <laughs> that like, and so, and so like, they just kind of disappeared off the, the, you know, the face of the planet after that. Uh-huh. So unfortunately there hasn't been like one big LA one, but I, I know that like a few others have talked about that. And I think it's super cool. I think it's the best. Yeah. How did, how did you originally find the Pug Rescue of Korea? Are you Korean? I am. I'm not. So Pug Rescue of Korea, they uh, actually partnered up with Pug Nation Rescue of LA. Got so it. Where you got Archie? With, with Pug Nation. Yeah, so with Pug Nation, um, so they're located in kind of like the Torrance Carson area. So mm-hmm. in this day, um, which is still LA, like for non-LA people, like LA is huge, you know, like massive. Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, like with traffic, it could be two hours from one end to the other. Yeah. And so um, with with being where I am in my location um, to foster, one of the things that they'll ask is that, like, you bring um, your foster dog to their like biweekly events. And so that was something with work and whatnot. I knew that would be a little bit more difficult. Sure. Unfortunately, I said, oh, OK, you know, I'm not sure if that's something that I can fully commit to at this time, mm-hmm. because because like basically any rescue or shelter i feel like is in need of of fosters just because right. they, they say it's it's such a beneficial thing for like dogs or cats to just be able to be in a home environment mm-hmm. where they're getting you know that kind of one-on-one care yeah it, it's it's just such a nice thing for them but with pug rescue of korea because they're flying in all the way from korea you know you do end up um kind of staying with them and and essentially you know you you kind of if um, someone is interested in adopting, you'll you'll speak to the potential adopter. But um, you know, if someone is then wanting to adopt, they'll mm-hmm. come to you. And so, fortunately, I think one of the nice things about fostering in general is that like the groups that you work with should re- do a good job of trying to make sure that you're not being inconvenienced. One of the sure. great things that I feel like a lot of people don't know is that like generally you don't have to have any expenses. Like. You get the food. If there are ever any medical issues, that's something that they take care of. Because oh, of wow. course, you know, it, yeah, it, it, that's something that's really, really scary. Of course, like you know, like sure. you wouldn't want to take in a foster for some reason to have this unknown issue that happens, and then be stuck with a vet bill. That would be so, so scary. Sure. So fortunately, you know, like I, I know at least with both Pug Rescue of Korea and and Pug Nation Rescue of LA, like if you're a foster, they cover like all expenses, even food. And and they even like give me puppy pads and all of that just in case you know dogs might have accidents. So that's cool. They, yeah, yeah, it's it's nice. You know, they they because you really are helping out so much with your time and your energy. Yeah. That <clears throat> they they want to make it as smooth of an experience as possible. And so, yeah, I'm I'm super excited for tomorrow to yeah. to have a, a, a another one in my life and and. I'm hoping that the only thing I hope for is that he gets adopted here in LA. Yeah. <laughs> so that I might be able to, to see him here and there. Yeah. But as long as as long as he finds a good home, you know, for me, that's like, you know, the end of the day, that makes me happy. But yeah. Yeah. Sure. I I do love that the pugnacious pins. Also, did Pug come first or did Pugnacious the word come first? What do you think? From an English oh, you standpoint. Know, you know, that's a very good question. And you're one of the first people I've met that has actually known because I actually didn't know that it was a real word. Like, oh. like so, so <laughs> yeah, so, <clears throat> so I, I call my, my art stuff Pugnacious Pins, but most people just assume that I name it that, like, as, like, as, as, like, a play on the word, I don't know, like, sure. play on some other word, but sticking in pug. But, like, Pugnacious is an actual word, it, so... It, it's funny because it means angry, and I'm like, I don't it think does, I'm an angry like, person. Willing to fight all the time, pug. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. You're right, right. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> that's Kubo. He's very pugnacious. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Archie, Archie, at this point, very yeah. much so as well. Like, bring it. But, yeah, that, that that's a good question. I pugs have been around for a long time, so you know, may, maybe, maybe back then they were, they, they, they were, they were the kings of their household, and yeah. <laughs> That's where the word comes from. I'm glad it's called pugnacious pins because I have the most pugnacious pug and it just checks out. I didn't know. I guess I should have assumed, but I didn't know that uh, the original pug art is your boys. And I do love now that Otto lives on through your art. 
How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. I I, I love that too. You know, like funny enough, it it was something that made me sad. Like, because I mean, just oh, like that. Like you're talking about, you know, we were talking about YouTube. It took me a good while. Like pretty much, you know, like I, I was in that place where anything that reminded me of him, mm-hmm. you know, brought me to a sad place. But I'm now like so, so glad to be able to have that and that like I've even, you know, been able to to um help raise money with some of the pins of both Archie and Otto specifically, yeah. you know, and 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 kind of give back through that. And I know you are a tattoo guy. Do you have a tattoo of a uh, of Kubo yet? Oh nice. That's his paw it. print. It took 18 tries to get because it was oh, one of those to, like to the, it was one of those pressure the... ink pads. He'd always like mm, pull his arm back. I'm like, Kubo, I'm trying to get your paw tattooed on my leg. Help me help you. <laughs> And he just wasn't That's so it. funny because like one of the things that I, I remember seeing once that I love the idea of was like someone using their dog's paw prints to like uh like it was this like really like nice looking thing where it looked like irises, I think, where like if you like do like a couple different colors and then you do the paw prints and then like you kind of like can use whatever to make like the stems. I was like, oh that's so nice, but I was like, oh, I could never do that with our <laughs> I'm sure one of the things you have issues with, I, I feel like a 99% certain thing with dogs where it's, they do not want their nail trim. Like, mm-hmm. they they will scream and fight you to the death. Oh, yeah. I jujitsu hold him. Well, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, I used to have to, like, wrestling hold, like, yeah. my boys to be able to do it. But, yeah, so paws are, like, a no-go for, for a lot of us. It took forever. And I was like, cool. And then I took the actual card into the my uh, my tattoo artist. And I was like, this right here. And he's like, all right. Did like a whole scan. So it's like proportionate. It's like, it's his paw. Oh, uh, that's awesome. I love that. Like, I, so I don't have any tattoos yet because like one of the things I've always known about myself is that like, if I get one, I want to be able to get it of something that I know I'm going to love even like 20, 30 years from now. Because like, sure. I, I'm so like, like, you know, again, it's one of those things where it's like when it comes to like, permanent decisions oh yeah the, the anxiety comes in <laughs> sure. so like, I, I can't just get like like when i was a kid i liked care bears i don't like care bears as much now you know like <laughs> yeah. at a certain point i really love game of thrones don't feel that way necessarily about it now you know so it's like okay i i i didn't know for a long time what i would get but like i absolutely would get uh tattoos of like archie and Otto. yeah and if, that's what I know, like, I want to do, like, once I figure out, like, okay, you know, this is something that I have, have uh, like, figured out, like, where I want it, what I want it of, like, mm-hmm. 100%, you know, and it's just, yeah, yeah, it's, like, I, I love being able to kind of see what other people do in regards to the, the tattoo they get from themselves, because I feel like, you know, it, it kind of, like, tells your own story. Oh, yeah, you know? 100%. And, I saw someone one time got a got their their dog's favorite toy tattooed on them, and I was like, "That's really good." Oh, that's that's really sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really really sweet. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm not quite sure because, like, for me, I'm like, do I want their face? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. You know, I'll I'll have to I'll I'll have to figure it out. But 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 I'm I'm okay. I I, I would be okay with like a giant pug on my back. Yeah. There you go, Archie with his arms crossed, and then Otto behind yeah, him yeah, with yeah, a bandana. Yeah, you know, and, and, then, and then he and then he has like the 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 little heart with the arrow on his shoulder that says "Dad." There you yeah. go, just pug <laughs> life underneath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. Luckily, you're an artist, so you can you can design the thing, you know. So you're like, hey, here's my thing, and just bring it to yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like Boom. it's yeah, it, it's it's funny you say that because I'm like. I don't know if I would get something uh, that I made myself or if I would maybe, you know, like find an artist just because like I, I, I do go. Sure. I do really, really enjoy uh, kind of seeing other people's interpretations of things. So, sure. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah, into that, it. That's definitely something uh, I'll consider. But I, I love that you have the the Kubo tattoo. That, do you ever oh, yeah. like show it? Do you ever show it to I him? show it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I've showed it to strangers in bars, Peter. <laughs> I love that. I love yeah, that. I'm that guy. 
<laughs> I'm looking for an excuse to be like, you want to see my phone background? Want to see my lock screen? Want to see my ankle? <laughs> As you should. Yeah, it's it's one of those funny things where it's like when I meet people, I'm like, like sure, your 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 children and 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 whatnot are nice, but like, show me your dog. Yeah, 100%. I want to see your dog, especially if it's pug. Show me your pug. Absolutely. It's like, tell me everything. What is their favorite food? What are those? What are their activities? It's like, well, my five year old can spell. I don't care. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I, I became an uncle for the first time this year, and I'm like so excited about it. But then, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, she's related to me, so I'm excited. Yeah, exactly. Like, when it comes to other when it comes to other human babies, I'm like, you know, hope they're doing well. But yeah, it's like cool. Know. I guess you know how many yeah. of those there are. <laughs> yep, yep. It, Look it's at fine, this but you know. Yeah. yeah. If, it, if it's a pug, especially <laughs> a pug, then, then it's the best. It's the yes. best. Yeah. What What do you use to like make your art for the pins? Like what software, what kind of hardware are you working? So like, uh, so generally like Adobe, like Illustrator, Photoshop. Okay, um, cool. So once you do the design, so, so I guess to kind of give you like a simple walkthrough of like yeah, the process. Break it down for like, me. It, yeah, it, it was something that like, uh, I was, I was surprised to learn, but like essentially you figure out, um, kind of what you want to do there are definitely like a lot of parameters that you have to follow when you make a design because like like if you're not super familiar with enamel pins like essentially like um the enamel part is actually like the paint but like mm -hmm. all of them are generally made out of like metal and sure. so the thing before making it that i didn't realize is that like each pin actually has to be cast through like a die made with like molten metal so one of the oh. things i found out is that like in like the United States, there are actually no companies that do it just because it's such like an extensive process. Mm -hmm. And and it would then like kind of like really skyrocket like the price of, of them. But um sure. so so pretty much everyone works with like a company where um you send them the artwork and 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 uh once it kind of falls in along the lines of of uh what you want, so like um you know, say like, like, again, you know, like the face of a dog, you know, you'll, you'll figure that out and you'll figure out what size you want and whatnot. Then, um, yeah, from there, like a lot of that, um, ends up, uh, being taken care of, like on, on the other side of things with the company where like, they literally have to create like a unique mold for, for, um, for each design you have. And then it gets like, uh die casted with molten metal and then it goes through like a few steps of of like um of, of just like uh like dipping and uh painting and shaving and so it's it's like this really really crazy process that i really respect because in a lot of cases also they end up being hand painted where like Whoa. like each of the little crevices end up getting filled like now they do have like some machines that kind of automate and and, and do that but a mm -hmm. lot of it is still like um hand done and then so from there you know when it gets back we quality check it and then you know you put it on the cards and all of that but um like one of the things i do like is that it's a collaborative process and unfortunately you know sometimes it's like you do have mistakes here and there because of that but sure yeah you know like i think the both the fun but uh scary thing about it is it's like with certain art forms especially ones that have kind of come into prominence more recently you just don't necessarily know how long they may stick around sure um you know fortunately it's been something that's that's been um going for a while but i think i just like i feel so fortunate that like even outside of the art stuff that like i have been able to find like a community of people of of pug lovers sure. <laughs> who who, who like what I do and and it, and it's funny because it's like I I would have really really hesitated to say that you know a few years ago of, of like even the idea of like do people like what I do but yeah I'm glad that I I feel like I've I've grown along the way like you you've been acting now so you said 2015 right yeah 2014 so, I started yeah oh 2014 so you're been almost at, at the 10 year mark yeah you know Oof, the overnight success and, and, is coming yeah. And, and so like, you know, I'm sure for you, like kind of your mentality about what you do must have like really, really kind of changed and grown. Oh, yeah. And you have to come. I feel like you have to come into your own as an artist, because I remember talking to my wife about that, where I would have this like, you know, am I good at this? Like, can I do this? And then I, I distinctly remember a moment where I was like, I've been doing this 
for nine years professionally, I better be good at it. <laughs> it's like, if I'm not good after this many years into it, I need to pivot. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. there is, there is a, uh, an ownership of your craft, I think that you kind of have to have to, to reach that next level in your journey as an artist. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I really feel for like so many people because like I, I I've, I've talked to a number of people and, and I'm sure, you know, you do as well as, as an actor where it's just like, there's so many people who are interested in pursuing some type of art, even if it's just like casually. Oh yeah. But like that first step is like such a scary one to make. Oh, and I yeah. think like over the years for me, you know, one of the things I've, I've realized, I mean, it, it is certainly different for like enamel pins, I would say than something like acting, because mm -hmm. with acting, that is something that is more finite. Like, you know, sure. unfortunately, it's not one of those things where it's just like, there's a role for every single person out there. Sure. But, like, with, with like physical art, it, it's, a, it's also not something that like every person on the planet can get into. But like, one of the things I always like to tell people and, and that I realize myself is that like, there are so many talented people out there, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily just about the talent. Like, True. you have to be willing to like, believe in yourself and take that step. You know, yeah. it's, it's really that first step of putting yourself out there, realizing you're going to make some mistakes, you're going to suck a little bit. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I think for me, that was really one of the hardest parts because it's just like, again, growing up like Asian American, like you're not afforded the, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the opportunity to make mistakes. You just always have to be good. And so that was something difficult to deal with. But like, it's something I really truly believe in now where I think there are people out there that are so successful at what they do. And, and that's across like all types of, of work because mm -hmm. they like, believe in themselves yeah maybe maybe even too much but I mean, yeah, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, even delusionally so yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, believing in yourself is that great thing like yeah I, I feel like as a kid one of the things i never knew and that i, I that i wouldn't have believed was true is that like once you hit that adult place is when you realize like everyone's insecure yeah you know everyone has insecurity it's just like a lot of people are good at hiding it mm -hmm. you know but it's like when that clicks you're like oh okay we're all to a certain extent kind of faking it till we make it totally you know and, totally. and, and so i i think it can be a good thing to have that imposter soon because like you were saying earlier you know it keeps you humble yeah it keeps you <laughs> humble. And, and, and and i think it's about building up that good balance you know whether it's you know wh wh whether you're you're an actor or whether you're you know, someone that works in teaching or, mm -hmm. or, you know, an office job, hopefully not a doctor, be really confident. Yeah, about right. that, <laughs> but, like, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that with like a lot of time and just, you know, thinking it through and working on myself, I feel like I've come to this place where I know I'm not perfect, but perfect is not the goal to begin with. Yeah. You know, just kind of like improvement even if it's just a bit of improvement over a period of time, that's mm -hmm. still a nice thing. Yeah. You know? I agree. That's a nice thing. So yeah. is there, is there a design or a pin or something that you've made that you're like particularly proud of? Oh man, you know, that's a really good question. And every now and then I get asked that. And it's funny because like, I guess for me, it's weird because like in their own way, like, I mean, so I've, I've done like well over a hundred different designs at this point. Not every single one of them do I like love with the passion, but like so many of them, I'm like, when I create them, I love them. Yeah. But then like, I think for me, you know, it kind of ebbs and flows. The ones that kind of are closest to my heart, surprisingly, are the pug ones, you know, because like they're the ones that just like, they make me smile it makes me happy when other people connect with them. Like, of course, with other designs, you know, it's 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 something that I don't take for granted. I feel like one of the things that is is severely underrated is just kind of people keeping gratitude in mind. Yeah. Not even just in a personal sense, but for other people, you know, because then like I feel like that's what really helps you to remember what's working for you. Yeah. You know, like I, I think for me, one of the things that I was struggling with during the pandemic was like, OK, how much do I want to grow? Like I have some friends doing the same thing that I'm doing mm -hmm. that are pretty wildly successful and I'm glad for them. Yeah. And, you know, and it was like, do I want to be there, too? And, you know, for me, recognizing like I am fortunate in doing what I do because it does give me the time to 
give Archie my my energy and attention and time while while still you know getting to do other things it's you know it's it's absolutely work and and some days and some events are grueling Mm -hmm. you know and and I'll finish them and and just be really really drained but at the end of the day I think like just recognizing that like hey you know this person showed interest in something I created yeah that in itself is like a really really nice thing like I don't often think about like you know that first person who ever like back you know the two pins of Arginato but like when I do like I still remember that feeling of like this is crazy yeah like I can't believe someone likes this enough to want to you know pick it up and support it and so you know I think for me that's something that I I hope I don't lose sight of and and I think just, you know, in, in, in general, like, I, I I know that, you know, that's not something that everyone has. Like, you know, unfortunately, not everyone enjoys their work. Right. I think, I, I, I think, you know, you're really, really lucky if you're in a place where there's something you can be excited about with what you do. Yeah, like, that's the goal. Know, yeah, 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 absolutely. And so, yeah, you know, I'm I'm glad that I that I have that. And, and that definitely took time to figure out. But yeah. I bet. Do you have any advice for anyone who wants to like get into the pen game or like any, any pitfalls to avoid? <laughs> Save you some oh time. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, so I, I've, I've definitely spoken to like a number of people who were, who were um, kind of new and getting into things. So I've been around for quite a while now and, and I've seen people come and go because, you know, again, unfortunately for, for a number of people, it might not be something that ends up being kind of um, viable sure. as as a full time career. And you know, some people do make it work. Fortunately, I think one of the biggest things that's really really tricky, especially for me myself, that that I still uh, have a lot of uh, work to do, is that um, when you're an artist, especially an artist that's like selling physical media, mm-hmm. so much of what you do. And 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 how you are able to succeed just comes down to marketing. Like uh, I'm actually someone sure. who does not love social media. Same. Uh, I yeah, you know, like I I have my page on Instagram, you know, to to promote my art and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I I actually don't even have a, my own personal page. I had a page for Archie. <laughs> but like, you know, like like even when I use Instagram now, generally I'm like. I'm just following other people's pugs. You know, yeah. I'm like, I want to see pictures of your pugs. I don't really yeah. care about too much else. But like, <laughs> at the Same. end of the day, I, I truly believe that like people, even without insane amounts of talent, should be able to share what they're passionate about. Agreed. Like if you're someone that's an artist and you're not the best, because I certainly don't consider myself the best. I, I think I'm at this place now where I've done it for so many years where I recognize that what I do is good because I also put so much care into what I do. I can be a perfectionist mm-hmm. and that's something that I think works well for me in, in, in regards to making pins. But I also believe that it's okay. Like, you know, if you're someone who hasn't done a ton of art, if you're interested in doing it, but I think, you know, it, it, it then does cross that line into like, you know, I, I'm sure for you as an actor, like giving advice to someone who wants to get into acting just for fun, oh, you know, yeah. doing small things versus like as a career. Those very different very, conversations very different things yeah <laughs> yeah and so like i would say you know really as as a career if you're getting into it being able to market yourself is that huge thing because one of the things i've recognized is there's a niche for almost everything yeah. like if there's something you love like you'll you might be surprised to find that there are other people who love it of course sometimes things are too niche because i've discovered that myself too you know where it's like there's something you really love the idea of like even, even after doing it now for for six years it's still one of those things where sometimes i'll create a design and i'm like oh i think like this is something i love so much i'm so excited about and people are like whatever you know <laughs> it's, it's not something that people are interested in which is okay sure you know? and, and then other times there's something where i'm like oh i kind of like this i don't know if it's necessarily going to be something other people enjoy and then people love it and, and and that's a nice surprise but like at the end of the day you know it's it's still, I think for me, one, and and I think something for everyone to recognize is just like, it's also good to have separation of like what you do versus who you are. For oh, me, that was something sure. that was really, really difficult for so long because then you start tying your self-worth into mm-hmm. your success. 
And that's sorry. I'm not. A, I don't know if I'm allowed. To pass, but you can. Fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> for real. That's up. You know. Yeah. It can really, really mess with you mentally. And for a long time, it did for me. You know, I, I just, you know, combined with anxiety and whatnot, created a, it creates a lot of anxiety. But like, I still have to remind myself of that. And that like, it's great to take pride in what you do, Mm -hmm. and to be passionate about what you do. But also to be able to step back and say like, hey, I am still a whole valuable person, even if what I'm doing isn't where I want to be. And and for myself, that's not something that I can always remember, but like, right. it's something for me to work on that, you know, that I'm glad is at least kind of there for me to, to kind of touch base with. Yeah. I think that is genius advice because that's something a lot of people fall into. It's like, that's what you do. That's not who you are. Yep. That's why a lot of times when I have, the, like, I have a lot of actors on my show just because I'm an actor and I love to talk shop, yeah, yeah. you know, and like steal all of their secrets, <laughs> you know, it's like, how do you do that? Okay. Yeah. I'm writing that down. But at the same time, if somebody is just an actor and that's all they've done, I usually am not as interested. I'm like, who, mm. but who are you as a person? You know, like that, that's yeah, kind of the, yeah. the fun for me. I love your art, but who's Peter? You know, and like that's that's what I'm here for. Yeah, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. And I feel like, you know, just kind of in general, one of the things that's so funny is that, you know, kind of like out in the world and, and in society, when you meet people, that's just that first thing, like, oh, what do you do? Uh-huh. Which, which makes sense. Sure. But like, because, you know, for, for so many of us, we spend so much of our time mm-hmm. with work. But yep. like you're saying, you know, I, I, I feel the same where I think it's like being able to really get to know that person and, and, and see what makes them excited, what it is that they love and, and you know, what they connect with. Is, yeah. is that really nice end of things. Agreed. And like real connection between two people. And there's nothing that connects people better than pugs. It's like a <laughs> drug. That's why it rhymes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> we need to bottle up that corn chip aroma that they have and just like that's the new hustle <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it'll sound it's it'll sound yeah i'm sure it sounds weird to to non-dog people but yeah like the, the best thing is just like especially like you know like on, on a cold night when you're cuddling up with your jaw just getting a good sniff oh my god dude it's kubo is a foreman at the frito factory right <laughs> <laughs> it's the best thing it's the best i love it and dude, just like that, we've been talking for well over an hour. You survived, pal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed my conversation with you, Brian. Of course, dude. Thanks for saying yes. I mean, I'm sure the blackmail helped, but I'm glad it did. You know, <laughs> we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just as long as you don't share the details. Well, yeah, yeah you get well. We're, we're you know, all right. Behave. Uh... And I won't. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be sure I'll be sure to to, to send Kubo his uh the list of things he asked for. There you go. Good. 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 I'm glad that's that was said on record. Yeah. <laughs> Please give Kubo a big hug for me. I will, dude. Same for Archie. Now, before I release you back into the wild, though, I gotta ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff? Talk to me. Oh, yes. Thank you for asking. So my uh Instagram is is kind of my I guess my general main way of of uh kind of being out in the world in the internet. And I'm at uh pugnacious dot pins and uh my website is just uh pugnaciouspins.com which is where i have all of my stuff but um i'm, I'm really excited so one of my favorite events of the year is coming up it's pug nation's uh annual pugtacular spooktacular Woo! so they're, they're having a big old um halloween event on the last weekend of of october where Amazing. where they're raising money for themselves you right if you guys are not doing anything you have got to come out. It is so fun. There's like a huge pug uh, costume contest where they have multiple categories. People come up with the best things, but I'm going to be there uh, with my own stuff and also raising money to uh, give back to Pug Nation. It's a super fun event. Like it's uh. it's my favorite thing that I do of the year. And then also the following weekend after that, the first weekend in November, uh, Pug Rescue of Korea is actually having their big anniversary event where they're going to where I'm going to be bringing my beef Wellington boy over to the uh, event and, and just kind of getting, you know, to meet all of the other, like just supporters and, and fosters and adopters and things like that. But, you know, I would be so happy if, you know, any extra people came out just to, you know, support them and check it out. It's super, super fun. 
please do also, if you get a chance, or if you're interested, check out both Pug Nation and Pug Rescue of Korea. Um, both of their Instagrams, Pug, Pug Rescue of Korea is just Pug Rescue of Korea. Pug Nation is Pug Nation LA. And, and they're wonderful, wonderful organizations. And yeah. I love it. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show and stay up to date on new episodes, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, recent projects, and other stuff I'm up to. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. As speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic to pick you up some sweet gear. And if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases while you're at it, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash Brian. On that note, special thanks to Ben, Chris, Daryl, Daz, and Victor. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>